Yeah, I've just been thinking lately. I sent you a screencast of those emails I received, John. Excuse the background oh, yeah. noise. Uh, that is devilish, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's funny too because I was pointing this out to. Um, oh, oh I, can, I can hear myself now. Can you? Yeah. Anyway, we should be okay, John, with it. I don't think it'll come out too badly, will it? I can hear it, like, really clearly. I can hear myself pretty clearly. Wait. It's not echoing, though, is it? Do you, do you have your tab playing noise? I, I, no, I've got no YouTube tabs open. All I've got is StreamYard and email addresses and a Google search tab. Because I can, oh. now, now I can hear you echoing, too. Oh. Wait, see, do I have do I have a tab open? Oh yeah, no, no. Oh, I have a tab open. Uh, that was a problem. It's okay. It's easy to miss. No yeah. big deal. But I've been thinking. And I'm not I really. I'm not trying to justify myself. I mean, I got over. Well, at least I think I did. I got over myself years ago, John. You know, I don't think I've got any. I mean, I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, but those emails too, and it's kind of funny too. I, I pointed this out to reflect upon the word. It's it's pretty ironic how Jason gets offended when you call out his sin. I have a clip I sent you of Jason accusing Tim of preaching work salvation when Tim is pressuring him on listening to this wicked, you know, secular rapper. But then when Jason, but then Jason, he gets to call it your sin. Then you know, it's like, but then not all that stuff you did as a lost man too. You know, so it, so it's wrong. So we're preaching work salvation. We call it his sin, but then he can do it back to us, and it's somehow okay. Okay, yeah. complete hypocrisy. Yeah, but I was thinking about something. I don't, I'm not interested in the slightest in addressing anything that he says. It's not about him. Yeah, you'll know what I'm on about. Um, yeah, I mean, how many people? Are that in scripture? I can think of two. There might be a couple of others. Oh yeah, including King David, Moses, and Paul, who either were accessory to or were involved in uh, what we would call today, anyway, by today's standards, murder. Yeah, I mean exactly, Moses yeah. through the Egyptian. Um, Obviously, he was doing it to protect a Jewish guy, one of his brothers, you know, one of his yeah. tribe. Paul was holding the cloak of those that were stoning Stephen. Now, that would be accessory to, I mean, I don't know what the laws were then in Rome or Jerusalem. I mean, he may have had official, he probably did have official sanction. He was one of the chief Pharisees. A Pharisee of Pharisees. Uh, yeah. And King David, he sent Uriah out, didn't he? He sent a note to one of the... Uh, oh, I, oh, I read it as well yesterday. Um, what was the exact name? He sent, it, he, he sent a message to one of his generals. Send U Uriah out to the forefront of the battle. And then withdraw from him. Yeah, I think died. it's uh, I think it's uh, Second Samuel. I could try to find the verse actually. Uh. <coughs> My cat is just rummaging around in the background. Yeah, it's Second Samuel chapter eleven, verses five to twenty-seven. Yeah. Now, I, as I say, John, I'd really. I mean, I hope people believe me when I say so. I hope you will. But, I mean, I really am not trying to justify myself. But I, I don't know anybody, regardless of whether they're regenerate or the born-again, say, Bible-believing Christians, who hasn't had a certain amount of hate for someone, even wishing they could do something... You know what I mean, John? Uh, yeah. 
it, that I'm not excusing. All, all I'm saying is, you know, let's make a right judgment here. I'm not proud of having done the amount of time in jail that I did. Half of my life, John. And I've been in institutions before that, you know, which I'm not going to go into. Um, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the thing too, you know, um, the, obviously, you know, the context is the whole, you know, the context of, because it's funny, Jason will say, oh, don't judge and everything. And, you know, we should judge sin, obviously, but you don't bring up stuff people do in a lost life. You know what I mean? That's another thing too. Well, I was totally lost, John. I'm not going to go into what my attitude was. I mean, I was in the army. Uh, I did have a bit of an attitude. Well, actually, yeah, a bit of an attitude. I was a lot nicer person, I think, in other ways. I'm more cynical these days, obviously. Yeah. Uh, uh, but anyway, that that's not what this stream's about. Let them get on with it. Let them be vicious and evil and vile. I mean, they, they accused the Brian Denlinger crew of being vile, uh, but they haven't got to... Oh, what's the expression now? It's almost as though the Fenninger Pork crew have cornered the market on nastiness and vileness. They're a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. They're not they're not much different. They're both equally as, you know, nasty and just, you know, uh yeah. high minded and everything. Yeah. If, if I, can I can I quickly share my screen? I'm just gonna show a verse of scripture real quick. Just pour this cup of tea and then I'll be there right there with you. All right. Just go. I've got to have me a cup of tea. Yeah, you can share the screen anytime you want, John. No problem. All right. Share screen. Uh, oh, I think I can't do it while your thing's sharing. Yeah. It's a pity we can't have two sort of people who can uh, run the stream, if you know what I mean, so that they can do... Yeah. What happened there? Something fell oh, off. I just got on the floor and some... No, no big deal. <sighs> right, I'll, I'll share your screen. I'll get rid of mine, because I can always come back to that. Yeah, show your screen, John. Okay, so here, here's a, here's a verse of scripture that really, really kind of ties into this whole thing. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, disciple Matthias, I've seen him around. Oh, he's polite, yeah, so thing. Here's a verse of scripture I was going to read. So 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Okay. You know they're gonna they're gonna get rewarded according to their works. The people that just lie about us and falsely accuse us and just you know attack us all the time. Yeah, yeah. Let them get on with it, John. They they will eventually, as the Brian Denlinger crew seem to be doing, they will eventually tear each other apart. I mean, you saw that screenshot I did with you know with those red crosses like uh, uh, last days May crossed out, Tim crossed out. And then we're left. Then they're, they're all left with Jacob at the inner echelon of the hierarchy yeah. of the Delta group. The one who has the special contact with Brian. The Fenning, yeah, and the Fenningerites. They're tearing each other apart, and Jason's right, sort of in the middle of that. Yeah. Well, Jason, he's just he's just a sower of discord. He just likes sowing discord and strife and contention. You know, I had grace for him in the past, but quite frankly, I have no like grace for him anymore. That as long as he's right in the middle of it. Yeah, and, and like I used to have grace for the guy, but quite frankly, I have no more grace for him anymore because you know he's he's been reproved, he's been rec he's been corrected, uh, attempted to be corrected many many times. I've I've tried to correct him many many times, and he won't take it. So yeah, I've I have no more grace for him anymore.
And it's not just me, like many people have tried to correct him, tried to show me, you know, show him where he's wrong, show him from scripture. And, you know, he just has this fixed mindset. Um, yeah, he's, uh, you know, and I, think, I think his heart's been hardened. He, you know, he just, he has his fixed mindset. His heart's been hardened, I think. Anyway, that's enough of him. He's not important. Yeah, obviously. Um, but this thing about the Horde of Babylon, let me just remind myself of the title. The Horde of Babylon, the Catholic Baphomet cult. Oh, don't say it. We might, we might get kicked off YouTube. You know, yeah. Yeah. How hard is it to expose Roman Catholicism, John? It's not difficult. Yeah, you just do a video showing where they're wrong from Scripture and that's it, you know? Yeah. What's, I mean, it's not hard at all. I've done it. I dare say I've done it thousands of times. I can, I can do it right now on the spot. I can literally do it right now on the spot. Just show Revelation 17, show pictures of how it lines up with the Vatican, basically. I could do it right now on the spot if I wanted to. It's that easy. Yeah. Islam, well, that's just a product of uh, the Catholic, the Catholic so called church, the Roman Empire. In order to con conquer Jerusalem, they, they, they created a proxy army, much like they still do today. And yeah. plus, it's, plus, it's really easy to show just like also the pagan roots of Islam too, how it's rooted in you know Arabian yeah. pagan religion, how you know Allah is essentially just an Arabian moon deity. Like you know, very easy to prove that. It doesn't take a lot of effort or work to prove. Plus, people already have proved it too in the past. So you could just you know, oh, yeah. if you if you, I mean, if you if someone if as these fending guys are just so lazy, they could just you know take someone else's video and just show clips of that or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, it's that simple. Yeah. Now, there's because, nothing I mean, about the point. About teaching john as you know i know i know that you've done it a lot of time yeah and, and also calling out false prophets too there's nothing wrong with that calling yeah, out false but, prophets you know rebuking false teaching yeah but i mean you don't have to expose roman catholicism all the time brian denlinger doesn't i don't I and neither do i uh you know but how long does it take to make a i don't know a 20 minute video not long yeah, especially especially how they do it because they like, like when I make a video, I'll show the clips in the video. They don't even show the video; they just play the audio in the background and just upload the clip as is. They don't even try to edit the video or anything. So it's like they do; they'd have a really easy time just making the video, you know. Yeah. I mean, like when I do videos on Catholicism, I'll like put images on the screen, I'll superimpose stuff. I might, you know, have a clip playing here, a clip playing there, you know. And even then, I've still done quite a lot of videos like that. Or you could just go to Tunes to Tube. Which I'll show you now. I don't know if you've come across this one. You just up upload an image and then upload an MP3 music and just send it to your YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the link to it. I mean, I'm sure you can find an image with text, uh, biblical text on there and some audio. Uh, you know. I mean, that's, I mean, you can put text underneath the actual video and things and the title and whatever. Um, but th another thing that they don't expose, John, is the new, ver new versions. I mean, I, I don't like the word version, but I mean, we'll stick with that. The, I mean, I, the New Age Blavatsky and Catholic so-called Bibles, none of them is tried to expose any of that yeah it's still there john uh i do that stuff the research but you know it's, it's worth it i'll link it in the uh, chat I mean, I don't know a King James Bible-believing Christian that has not exposed Catholicism for what it is, John. I mean, it just when you're saved, you're going to go after a false religion. That's just how it goes. Well, not initially. But once you say you're going to come across Catholics and whatever, talking to people, you know what I mean? And then you're going yeah. to be sort of bombarded with that, and you're going to know, and then you're going to... As a Bible even, I mean, I, I was I uh, came across Catholics within months of me getting saved. I sort of started realizing that they're it's a false religious group, and I started asking 
questions and God and put me, I mean, I, I was, I think I may well have been reading Revelation quite soon, you know, I was asking stuff, you know, finding out things. Yeah, I mean, when you're saved, you know, you're just going to have that, like, there's something not right there. Like, when you go, if you enter a Catholic church, you're just going to, like, oh, there's something not right. There's just something spiritually wrong, you know. It's like you're just going to get kind of a bad feeling. John, can you put that link you just put in in the private chat so I can... Uh, sure. So I can go to it, please. Sure. Because I can't click on those links and... Oh, uh... uh, yeah. Okay. Um, you are Can't see it. No. Yeah, I, I was pulling it up because I tried to do it from the YouTube chat, but it wouldn't let me. So I'll just, I'll just go back to the website and just redo it. There we are. It's coming up. There's oh, also yeah. some uh, good books. I mean, I, I don't agree with every, I don't agree with everything that Ruckman says, but he's got a, a good book here called. Uh, it's called uh, Rome, the Great Private Interpreter. And he shows, uh, I think he shows eight different examples of private interpretation done by the Catholic Church while condemning yeah. private interpretations. Yeah. Yes, is another good book here. Um, actually, a good book on uh, Islam called Why I'm Not a Muslim. Another good book right there. Again, I don't agree with everything Ruckman yeah. says. He's, you know, I think he's off in some points, but. He's right on the golf one, I think. And here's a, another good one. Oh, yeah, the ESV. Another one's called uh, The Corrupt Catholic Cult. It's another good one showing, uh, you know, certain, just going through the official teachings of, of the Vatican II and everything and showing how it's uh, unscriptural and just heresy. Yeah, I never bought any Rockman books. I might do. I might do. No, I wouldn't want to yeah. spend all my time. There are there are ministries on YouTube that do it sort of continually, exposing the Jesuits. Yeah, like Eric John Phelps, he he uh, has dedicated his whole life to exposing the wickedness of the Jesuits and the, you know, the horror of Babylon and everything. So he he is kind of I mean he he kind of goes into he, like he I I mostly when I do Catholicism I kind of more expose it on like a doctrinal kind of basis. Like I'll go through their you know doctrine and I'll refute it from scripture. Eric Phelps, he kind of deals more with like kind of their power and their 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 power structure and everything. Uh, but either way, it's still yeah. exposing Catholicism either way. You know, YouTube deleted his channel, John. Really? When did they yeah. when did they do that? Uh, when the, cha the channel called uh, Eric Phelps, Eric John Phelps, Vatican Assassins. Yeah, uh, I think it might oh, be right. about they... ten. Days it's not on there oh, anymore. Right. It might. Yeah, the, okay. uh, there's a new channel called Eric John Phelps Vatican Assassins number four. So I guess that's the right. new I channel. Get on there, yeah, I get on it. It must have been for like hate speech or something or, or whatever, because uh, he he does say some pretty controversial. He does say some pretty controversial things, which obviously you, the, it'll be to do, you know it'll be, it'll be to that? do with it'll be to do with the Vatican. The Jesuit involvement with this COVID stuff, John. Likely, I've had videos of my own deleted for you know saying stuff about COVID, so probably that was the case. Yeah. Here's this new channel. Put it in the chat. I put it in the private chat too. Please, yeah, put a link on it. Yeah, he does have a website called VaticanAssassins.org. So that's worth checking out. Um, yeah. Eric. It, when he's on by himself, he's excellent. George Widge is all right, you know. Right, I'm going to put a link. Have you put a link to that in the chat, John? Eric John Phelps? I put a link to his, uh, this, the channel. I'm not sure if it's his channel, but I think it's just the channel that uploads his, uh, uploads his, uh, what are those, uh, broadcasts or whatever. All right. Well, he's only got 28 subscribers. Yeah, I've already I've I've already subscribed. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
I think his uh his there's three videos about on him. Um, I'm just I just I just googled Eric John Phelps Vatican or sorry YouTube search stuff Eric John Phelps Vatican assassins. I'm just gonna share my screen to show you what uh what the results are. Let me just close that. Close that and that and that. Yeah, so I'll just uh, okay. Because this is, you know, we have, but here's his channel. It's uh, Eric John Phelps Vatican Assassins, number four. That's his uh, channel. I don't know if that is Alec, actually Eric's channel, but well, it, it's up, it uploads his uh, his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so that's this channel. And also, you know, there's uh, these, th these three particular videos that are really good. Um, it's They're called, uh, uh, let me try to find them if I do it like that. Yeah, he has this one interview called All, All Roads Lead to Rome. Here's the channel I was looking for. Yeah. Called, this channel is called, this, this channel is called uh, Exposing Roman Catholicism, and they just, they seem to just upload videos. This channel uploads videos um, against Catholicism, and here they have I think they, they've uploaded a couple of uh, a Eric's broadcasts. Oh yeah, they, they, oh, the channel is also. I think the channel is uploading some of Brian's stuff too. Yeah, but it's basically like this channel is ex basically uploading videos exposing Catholicism. But they have some of uh, Fels, but the free videos I was gonna show are uh, these three videos here: Eric John Phelps, Vatican Assassin Part One, Part Two, and Part Three. He goes into like really good detail of, of just the, you know the Jesuits and how how they you know killed leaders and how the, you know how the Catholic Church has started. And he talks about their their how they started Islam and how a lot of these Muslim leaders and and you know like uh, what's that guy's name uh, the, the Nation of Islam. Uh, a lot of them are just Freemasons, and a lot of them. Yeah, Louis, yeah, Louis Farrakhan, him, yeah, yeah, Farrakhan. Well, he actually you know mentions how. Um, you know how the Nation of Islam is actually Masonic, and you know it's got connections to Freemasonry. And how oh, yeah. you know Louis Farrak Louis Farrakhan's a Freemason, and how a lot of the how how he talks about how Malcolm X was pretty much the only you know legitimate black leader that wasn't a Freemason, and that yeah. was one of the reasons I got him, got him killed because he actually was speaking the truth and everything. Yeah, he knew what was going on. He knew what was going on with Farrakhan and some of the others, Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. Martin Luther. And, King. And, and, Martin Luther King, as Eric John Phelps refers to him as. Yeah, I think this, this channel. Is, he was yeah. a humanic, essentially. Yeah, yeah I've, I've heard, heard that. Yeah, he, he would yoke up with Catholics and Jews and people who are unsaved. Yeah. He has a, he has a thing here called uh, Jesuit Communists. Martin Luther King, that's a channel here. He's got, he got one of Eric Phelps' broadcasts, Jesuit Communists. Martin Luther King Day talks about you know Jesuit fascism and but yeah the yeah. three videos here but that's the thing that that reason why I was saying the Nation of Islam is because there was that recent attack at the U.S. Capitol by a supporter of the Nation of Islam and you know it's a uh, uh, it just you know it made me kind of look into what they believe and everything and they got some pretty kooky beliefs I mean they actually believe that you know black men are like that Allah exists in black men or whatever and that you know black men are like their own Allahs and. They, they, they say, like, one of the things the Nation of Islam believes is they think that that there's, like, this council of gods or whatever, and that, like, each god takes a turn, like, ruling Earth or something. It's like, like, I mean, the, the Quran is a pretty nutty book, but I don't think even the Quran even teaches that. It's weird. The Muslims don't like black people, John. They've been using them as slaves for hundreds, if not a thousand years or so. Yeah. Well, the, well, the Arabs, uh, slave traders, a lot of them are Muslims, and, and they, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because I always I always find it kind of odd how like I was reading I was reading and like a lot of black supremacists and black nationalists a lot of them just love Islam and a lot of them just uh, like just love to convert to Islam and you know a lot of times they'll convert to, like little sects of Islam that are kind of like more black nationals oriented <laughs> but like they, they love Islam for some reason and they'll say that Christianity is like a white supremacist religion or whatever uh, yeah. but then they'll, they'll convert to Islam which you know they forget to realize that Islam was started by Arabs. It, it was started by an Arab man. It wasn't started in Africa. That, that's the thing that kind of cracks me up. Yeah. I mean, Islam is not an African religion. It's an Arabic religion. Yeah. It comes out of Arabian... Uh... Pagan religion? 
Yeah, that's where Allah Babylon comes from, really, basically. Out of Babylon, doesn't it, obviously? Essentially, it, it is essentially just a, a repackaged form of ancient Baal worship, essentially. Yeah. Um, yep, I might actually do a live stream at some point. I might, I might do one or a video or something exposed or showing, you know, the Nation of Islam and some of their connections, but I've been doing some research into them and they, you know, they, they're, they're a pretty interesting bunch, you know? I've read oh, some of those, go ahead. I've, I've read some of those uh, magazines you can get from Chick Tracks years ago. Uh, when did I get reading them? Just uh, about ninety-seven to two thousand between the uh, Alberto Rivera. I don't know what, how serious to take. What he says, I mean, well, did he leave Jesuitism? I don't know. But he, he does expose a lot of stuff, but it, it's nothing you couldn't find out normally, really. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing unique. I mean, Eric Feldt, he, he really goes into like more deep detail. I mean, his book, Vatican Assassins, apparently took him 20 years to write it. So it was 20 years of research and writing stuff and, you know, taking notes and everything. So he put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, he's not a Jesuit. No, I mean, I mean, some of the guys that call him a Jesuit, like those, the people who call that, I think they're just trolls or just you know, just they're they're trying to they're trying to just discredit him somehow. It's like, you know, I mean, would a Jesuit spend twenty years writing a book against the Jesuits? I mean, read his book. I mean, he brings out all kinds of damning information against the Jesuits. Like, you know, if he's a Jesuit, he's pretty bad at it. You know. Yeah, unlike uh, accountable KJV, he'll buy. He's that clever. He'll buy a book about the Jesuits exposing them, written by a Jesuit. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, yeah, and and it's like you know, it's like, it's like you know, I, I you know for a while for a while I called Aaron Daring a Jesuit because he was displaying some of the signs of a Jesuit. Uh, I I kind of maybe changed my stance on that. Maybe he could he could he could just be some novice kid or whatever. Um, but it's like you know. I can, you know, people, it is a basic fact that Jesuits will speak against Jesuits to, like, cover their tracks, but not to the extent of Eric Phelps. I mean, he did, he, he goes, like, like no Jesuit would go that far, basically. He, he's been doing this, as far as I know, 30 years, ever since I first heard of him and, and knew about his book. I've been listening to Eric John Phelps since uh, 2011. I I I heard of him in 2017 and but then I, or in yeah. no, 2018 that's when I first heard of him. Um, yeah. But he he does he's very smart but knows a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. All you got to do is look at everybody in politics in the USA or in Canada. Find out what university they've been to. It's not difficult. Yeah. I mean, I, well, believe, the, the I, best... I view the USA as just a, another Jesuit reduction. The USA is not the whole of Babylon. No, it's not. It, it's an arm of Babylon. It just, it just, it's under the control of Babylon. Yeah, it's just one tentacle, isn't it? Yeah, they, they like the, the American military is used to fight all the crusades against Islam in the Middle East, you know, causing all the refugees to come to Europe, and, and, and then you have the, the like controlled opposition on the right wing, who are Jesuits themselves, who will go after the Muslims, but they'll never name the Jesuits as like. These are the ones who are, who are causing them to come over here in the first place because they're, they're controlled opposition. A lot. I mean, it's funny. You look at all these like big right wing leaders in Europe. A lot of them have Catholic connections. A lot of them were raised Catholic or whatever. It's kind of interesting. So it, it just shows how a lot of that is controlled opposition. Yeah. A lot of people will blame. I mean, I've spent a lot of time, John, on Twitter trying to expose the Jesuits behind this Corona this coof stuff, you know what I mean, Dr. Fauci. But a lot, of, a lot of these so-called Christians want to blame the Jews all the time. That is, that's satanic. That is, the Jews aren't responsible for all this stuff going on. I know there's some involved, you know, but they're being used by the Jesuits as front men for their own agenda. Yeah, it, it's ironic that people who people who say the yeah. Jews run everything, they seem to forget that a lot of the big high level Jews in power were uh are, were have like knighthood from the Pope or served the Pope and were knighted by the Pope. So they, they seem to leave that little fact out, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what's the guy's name? Uh, you know, uh, what, what, he, he's like this. He's like a big socialist and whatever. Yeah, he's Bernie Sanders. That, that's the guy's name, Bernie Sanders. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think he, um, you know, he has connections too. I heard he's a Mason too. I'm not sure about that, but wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, because really, when it comes to American politics, to really to get to a certain level of political power, you have to just basically worship Satan. Well, you have to be connected with the judge. It was, or yeah, like uh, with, with uh, ungodly uh, practices and things. Yeah. Mainly child yeah, abuse. Scripture on that. Child abuse is the big leverage thing that they get on these politicians. It's obvious that Joe Biden is a nappy snapper. Yeah, I mean, the way you look at pictures of how he's like farming with his granddaughter, that's just downright creepy. I mean, just yeah. pervert, you know? Put it this way, John. Um, if somebody saw a video of you of, of anybody doing that in jail and then they ended up on their wing, they wouldn't be on there more than two minutes, John. Yeah. They wouldn't get to the wrong cell door. Yeah. That's the thing, too. There's actually some scripture on uh, what's that? Um, because you know the thing of, of you know having to worship, you know, be part of connect, be connected to the Jesuits or whatever. You know, uh, yeah. it's uh, Luke chapter four verses uh, five to six. It says, "And the devil taking him, Jesus Christ, up into a high mountain and showed him showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment yeah. of time. And the devil yeah. said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, uh, for that is delivered unto me." Delivered unto me, interesting, because Satan's the god of this world, according to Second Corinthians four four. And to whomsoever uh, will I give it? And then he says, "If thou, well, if thou therefore wilt worship me, uh, all the, all shall be thine." Not good at reading on a computer, but so Jesus had to actually worship Satan to get all this power. So I, I do believe, still, the same thing applies today. In order to get to a certain level of political power, you have to just worship Satan, basically. And the other thing is, John, Jesus never contradicted his ability to offer that. Yeah, Jesus knew perfectly well he had that limited power to do so. Which is also why, too, in, in verse eight, Jesus says, "It says, and Jesus said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou shalt thou serve." So, you know, and plus, Jesus is going to get the kingdoms during the millennial kingdom anyway. I mean, this earth already belongs to him anyway. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that, yeah, that was Luke chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. Can you read these comments, John? Sure. All right. What are these comments? Uh, I have to say, brother, for a chap your age to know so much is very good. And that, sorry, and not, sorry, my, gets my eyes. Um, and that you look into stuff, you know, stuff I've never heard of. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. That's a nice comment. All glory goes to God, though. That's the really th real thing. Uh, yeah, serve God only. I mean, yeah, exactly. You're supposed to only serve God, you know. You see, so that, the, that's biggest why... enemy, the biggest enemy to the body of Christ, to Christianity, uh, is not being exposed by them. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to ask yourself why. It's like like when when nine when nine eleven happened. You know, all all the Baptists. You know the you know Baptists who would. You know, presumably be against Catholicism. We're just all rallying to go to war against Islam. We gotta fight the Muslims. We gotta, you know, just destroy Islam, basically. But they they fail to mention the fact that 9/11 was an inside job by the Jesuits. You know. Yeah. 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 And it'll be Iran next, John, because that's a particular branch of Islam that's not towing the papal line. Yeah. Yeah, Iran. I mean, because they're they're not part of. They're not towing that line which is why you know this is a big push in america to just nuke iran we got to you know go to war with iran you know and that's the thing because iran's not towing the papal line basically they're not going they're not ba they're not bowing down to the jesuits and the, the yeah. vatican well the mistake, I, I mean, that felt... the, the, the mistake that the iraqis made was kicking out the jesuit because the, the, there was a university in iraq can't remember where it may well have been baghdad but they kicked out the Jesuits, didn't they? Saddam Hussein did. Yeah, and, and of course, 
of course, the, of course, America, they can't have that. You know, they have to do something about it. Yeah, and the central bank. I mean, that's another. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing, too, you know, I remember Eric Phelps was saying that the Vatican, they hate, you know, Shia Islam. And, of course, Shia Islam is still a false religion regardless, but the oh, Vatican yeah. hates Shia, Shia Islam, and they hate, you know, Iran, and they hate, you know, Shia Islam, which is also why the, the Jesuit-controlled Sunni Muslim groups are just so rabid against the Shia Muslims. Yeah. There was one Muslim, though, John, who I would certainly shake his hand, and, you know, uh, Suleiman the Great, because he helped out the Dutch Protestants. Yeah. When they were being persecuted, John. And that was mm -hmm. Muslim. So. Exactly. He, he, he knew who the real enemy was. It wasn't, Christ, yeah. it wasn't Christians, it was Catholics, you know, the Roman Catholic Church. I think a lot of Muslims know what that Vatican is, John. Yeah. I, I'm and, and I could, yeah. They're not stupid. How difficult yeah. is it to see? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, like, like again, like you said, like you said earlier, all you have to do is just okay. What university did they go to? Because according to the Jesuits, if you've gone to a Jesuit school, even if you've gone to a Jesuit high school, you're still part of the Jesuit family. So just even look at what high school they went to. You know what I mean? And they went to a Jesuit school, and uh, by the standards of the Jesuits, they're they're a Jesuit. You know, they're, they're they've been trained by Jesuits. You know, <laughs> you see, you it, it just, it just cra it cracks me if up. You go, if you go to a Jesuit university, you're still going to get the leaven of the Jesuits, aren't you? They're going to. Yeah, and it cracks me up too that people, people will say that America is Babylon. They seem to forget that even if America is Babylon, the rulers are still Jesuits because the leadership in America are Jesuits. So even if America is Babylon, the rulers, are, rulers are still Jesuits. Yeah. What a disgusting organization. Yeah. They've been abusing children over 2,000 years, John. Blimey. Yeah. And it's only, yeah. Ever since, uh, it's only since we got newspapers that people were finding out stuff. Really? Yeah. It, it, it's funny, too, because I remember seeing this, uh, this, this like pre Vatican II Catholic Instagram page post this thing. You know, by morning, oh look at this priest. He got you know, this priest. He got targeted by someone who was like saying, "Oh, I'm doing like." Because what happened was like like a couple years ago, there was this Catholic priest who who I guess was suspected of, of being a predator, and the, this like I guess this person decided to take the law into his own hands and like came after the Catholic priest with like a with a with like a hatchet or something, and like basically like attacked the guy and really injured the priest. And um and and the, and the guy was like screaming, "I'm doing this for the children you you've abused and." everything and and the priest was in the hospital and the catholic page was actually like mourning this priest you know look it's poor priest you know in the hospital yeah. it's like yeah he got attacked because he was basically a predator so it's like you know yeah but, there but they're actually defending the priest go ahead there's a there's a cover-up organization john where you could where the catholic so-called priest could go to get whitewashed uh, so-called sheep dipped well goat dipped called yeah. Opus Bono Sacerdote, and what happened is, they go to this organisation. I can put it on 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 the thingy now. I'll Google it. Right, they go there, uh, and they get a new name, new passport, or whatever it is, new identity, uh, and then they get moved on. And they still yeah. stay a Catholic so-called priests because they're all treated as though they're sort of little gods. Well, according according to the Catholic Catechism, the priest is actually another Christ. He acts. He basically acts as an, another Christ. So, you know, yeah. So, so they, they have to kind of treat him almost like a god, almost. I'll try, I'll try yeah. to find that thing in, in the Catechism, but it says somewhere like how they're like they're like a personal Christi or something, like another, like basically a substitute Christ, essentially. And, and that's also why only the priest can offer up the Eucharist is because, you know, they ha you had to have to have like a, essentially a counterfeit, you know, because they're all they are just a counterfeit Christ, essentially. So they ha that's why only the priest can, can offer up the Eucharist because he's supposedly like a like Jesus on earth. And like, if it's like, I don't know, it's weird how the whole thing works. Are you able to highlight these comments on screen, John? Uh. 
I'll see if I can. Uh, let's see if I can do it. No, I can't highlight comments. Uh. Wait. Uh, no, yeah, no, I can't. Oh, you want to know why? Because I'm on my uh, other account, I think. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, where, where's the, uh... Actually, the word Pope means father. Right. Vicarious means in place of. Yeah. Pontifex is a title of the old emperors, and he is actually still an emperor. The, the so-called Pope today, that disgusting thing in the Vatican, is actually technically an emperor of Rome. Essentially, yeah, I mean, he has, he because again, the Catholic Church is just simply a revived, it's just the Roman political empire just became a religious empire, you know, that's they've all it was. Raised, they've only just raised, raised the age of consent, John, in the last two or three years. They've raised yeah. it from about age 12 to 16. Why would they need an age of consent in Vatican City? Exactly, you know? yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's like, why? It's weird. Well, it's hypocrisy, isn't it? It's like, I mean, they have the age of consent at 12. What's that about? Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's that's disgusting, age 12. I mean, why do they have to have age 12 as the age of consent? Because they're perverts, that's why. Yeah. Where's oh, that? I, yeah, yeah, I, here's I, the... Um, because it's annoying me. I'm sorry, I, you know what I mean? They make me... Well, yeah. Here's the, here's the part here's the part of the catechism which uh, talks about. Uh, okay, where is that part? Uh, I'm trying to find it. But they, they, they call it um, they call it uh, in persona Christi or something, which is like which basically means in the person of Christ, which is what the priest yeah. supposedly is. This is it's, it's, um, this is Catholic Catechism paragraph number. I'll show, I'll just share my screen. So I can show the thing on the screen. This is from Catholics uh, say that their so-called priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> wow! If, if they actually read the Bible, if they actually read that verse, you know, Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. It's not some some celibate man, you know. Well, I suppose in their mind it makes sense, but I mean, oh, really? But that I yeah, mean, the fact. It, I think that's obviously, I mean, it's Satan's handiwork, in it, John? What should we expect? Yeah. So, so yeah, here, this is Catholic Church Catechism, paragraph uh, 1548, 1548. It says, in the ecclesi in the ecclesial, I can't, I can't read, I can't read these stupid words. Uh, am I sharing my screen? I'm not. Am I? There's my screen. Oh, no, it's not sure. I mean, how many, how many uh, articles in that? Catechism of the whatever. Uh, I don't know, but it's like, isn't the Bible enough? Or do you, like, it's just funny how the Bible's not enough. They have to have this big long, pair, like, like thing of the for all their beliefs. I think my is my screen sharing. No, it's not actually. Hold on, let me be. There. I'm just doing this cup of tea again. Do you want to be there? Oh, okay. And, uh, and if I do read this, I kind of mess up. I'm sorry. I, don't, I can't pronounce some of these stupid names they give them. What I was going to suggest to you, John, is you get an old printer that works and just print stuff out. Or if you're not sure how a certain word, word is read, put it in a, in one of their maps where it will read text out for you. Oh, yeah. Okay, share screen. Unless... Am I... I think vicarious Philly did add Philly did add up to six hundred and sixty six. I think there's more text okay. than that. Okay, now we're sharing. So this is a the paragraph of the Catholic Church Catechism because that was the curious Philly D. I think it means like a faithful substitute Christ or whatever. I don't know the whole thing means, but essentially well, because, what they're saying is they're basically false. The word, the word vicarious means in place of. Yeah, in so they're basically just false Christ. Yeah, it's funny because in Matthew yeah. twenty four, Jesus Christ warns about false Christ and people claiming to be Christ and everything. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I can see that Latin now. Virtuti. Oh, put it back up. 
It's a. Uh, can I speak? Vatuti. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Ipsius Christus Christi. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard I mean, to read his Latin there's, words. There's actually, there's actually Latin in the NIV, John. Oh, there is. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I, I read the NIV years ago, but in the, never, the seven uh... in the letters to the seven churches, it says Pergamum instead of Pergamos, as it does in the King James. But in the in the NIV, it says Pergamum. That's Latin. There's a few of the words in oh, the wow. NIV that's Latin. It's a new age so-called Bible, Satan's handiwork. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, but here's a, oh, what is that? Oh, I'm screen sharing. That's why I'm like, what just happened? Oh, screen sharing. So anyway, this is uh, the Catholic Church Catechism, paragraph 1548. It says, in the ecclesial service of the ordained minister, uh, it is Christ himself who is present to his church, the head of his body, shepherd of his flock, high priest of the redemptive sacrifice, teacher of truth. This is what the church means by saying the priest is, by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders, acts in persona Christi uh, capitis, hope I'm saying it right, which they go on to say, in the same priest, Je uh, Christ Jesus, who whose sacred person is, sorry, whose sacred person is minister truly represents. Now the minister, by reason of the sacerdotal, sacerdotal, what? Weird word. Yeah. Uh, all, these little all these little big philosophical words they like to use. Uh, consecration, which he has received, is truly made like to the high priest and possesses the authority to act in the power and place of the person of Christ himself. And it goes on. Yeah. Basically, what it means is that they're in the person of Christ. They're basically another Christ. But this thing here, John, oh, will you leave it up a minute, John, please? Oh, sorry about that. I'll put it back up. Oh, dear. Uh, screen share. There we go. Uh, back up now, I think. Is it back up now? Hold on. Oh, I'm not, now my eyes twitching now, great. Uh, is it? I think I'm screen sharing now. Fine. Great, now my eyes twitching now. Allergy season for me. Air fever, John, is it? Can you put that yeah, screen well, I, back? I, okay, I'm trying to figure out how you do it. Is it, it, says, I'm, it says I'm screen sharing. Yeah, you uh, are. I've got it. Okay, there we go. All right, it's back up. Right. Now it says here in that 1548, in the second line, high priest of the redemptive sacrifice. Uh, they're the priest of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, are they? Wow. Yeah. The absolute arrogance of that. They're doing Satan, that's Satan's handiwork there. They're trying to take the place of Jesus Christ. I mean, they even think that the Catholic so-called church is the body of Christ. And obviously we know that it's not. Yeah. Here's actually a good verse to respond to them on. Uh, I'll just show a quick verse of scripture that really, that really kind of like, like this is a verse I like to use to respond to these guys who, who try to say, oh, the priest is, uh, you know, in the person of Christ. It's a, uh, Romans chapter 8, I think it's Romans 8, verse 26. You see, if these, people 20... tell, if these people tell a big enough lie, people will believe it. And yeah. the lies they come out with is, is just massive. Okay. Okay, so it's Romans chapter 8. Verses 26. And here's also a good verse to use against those to say, well, the saints intercede for us, or Mary intercede for us. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit, which also, sorry, also help with our infirmities, for we know not what we should what we should pray, or for as we as we ought, for the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings yes. which cannot be which cannot be uttered. And in verse 27, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You mean the Spirit yeah. makes intercession for the saints and not the saints for us? Interesting. Yeah. It's and good verse to use against these guys. These Catholic so-called priests think that they are intercessors, you know, with the confessional 
and all the other stuff. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But as I say, I'm going to make the point again, John. If these Fenningerites, uh, King James Bible-believing Christians, why aren't they exposing Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, the false... Hinduism, God, whatever. The NIV, the NKJV, the Jesuits. What's difficult? It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Anybody can do it. Once they get on a learning curve, once they realise, once they get sort of mauled or attacked by a Catholic. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly, yeah. I have to get going now. My eyes are just hurting me again. I, I can only do it for so long before I get eye strain. So I I, I don't want to hurt my eyes. I'll be, I'll be getting going now. Okay, then. Yeah. Well, once, I, once I get those, like, once I actually buy those... uh. What are those things called? Blue light, blue light glasses? I'll be able to do it a lot longer. Just my eyes are hurting. Yeah. Anyway, how so yeah. expensive, John? Uh, the ones that I managed to find are pretty, pretty for a decent price. So I went out once I once I get my uh, first paycheck, I'll buy them because I recently got a new job. So once I get my first paycheck, I'll should have enough to buy them. Okay. All, All right, right. Then, John. Bye. Bye, John.